Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, allow me to start with uh, sharing my condolences with the families and uh, the friends and the entire country for the 34 souls that were lost in this exercise. Now, I just hear from my colleague that the number has gone to 39. At the same time, Mr. Speaker, sir, I would like to also share my sympathies with the Kenyans, innocent Kenyans whose properties were either looted or vandalized. I also stand here, Mr. Speaker, sir, because often little problems that happen tend to overshadow the bigger picture of what our security forces have been able to do. Uh, while there are rogue security officers that have caused a lot of pain to Kenyans, but there are those that have really stood very firm to protect this country from going into anarchy and uh, by making sure they abided by keeping law and order without also violating the rights of uh, our protesters as enshrined in the Constitution. I say this because I watched a very emotional video, Mr. Speaker, sir, where an armed police officer with a gun, with everything, was chased down the street. He could have opted to use the gun to protect himself, but accepted to be clobbered by the mob for the sake of making sure that extrajudicial killing does not happen. And we have such uh, security officers that we must have, uh, uh, you know, applaud and also share our sympathies with them for doing an excellent job. Mr. Speaker, sir, allow me to also congratulate General Z for the unprecedented success in this country. And what they have achieved over a few days is uh, going to go down the you know, democratic space of this country as an indelible mark in the nation, Kenya, for many years to come. Mr. Mr. Speaker, sir, uh, you, you know, for many people, maybe understanding the plight of Gen, Gen Z was a very difficult issue. I have a daughter who is in Form 2, Mr. Speaker, and I was away. I called. Uh, she was in midterm break, and I called to say bye-bye because she was going back to school. And the only question she asked me, Baba, can I ask you something? Are you supporting the finance bill? And she's in a boarding school. And I told her, no, Baba, I'm not supporting. And she said, had I been, had you, told, you know, had you answered you're supporting, Baba, I would never have been able to raise my head up in school because everybody knows my father is a member of parliament. These are the unfortunate scenarios we have, whereas maybe the adults don't understand our Gen Z have really understood what is bedeviling them. Mr. Speaker, sir, maybe it's, it's, it's worth to reflect on what is the true frustration of Gen Z. You look at the public service advertisement in Kenya. Only those that are able and have money will have access to opportunities in the public service, whether it is at the national level or the, at the county level. Now you have stu children going to school and going through the uh, <coughs> most levels of higher education, but with zero hope of getting employed. Then they look at the budget of the nation, and they try and come through the budget to see if there is only hope contained in that budget that is going to really help them out, and they see nothing. And they see an opportunity that oppresses more in the finance bill, and that has boiled into a situation where they had taken the matters into their hand. Mr. Uh, Madam Speaker, sorry, I did not notice the seat has changed. Uh, Madam Speaker, while I congratulate Gen, Gen Z for exercising their right uh, to, you know, demonstrate and share their concerns, I also wish 
to point out that the exercise of freedom of piketty should be practiced in moderation and with a, with a lot of uh, control so that the exercise of that right does not infringe on the right of others as it is. Madam Speaker, true wisdom lies in recognizing that smart people do not invite anarchy upon themselves, but rather find every little opportunity for them to fight anarchy. I was fortunate or unfortunate enough to have had experience in my, in my past life as a, a pilot to have worked with the UN agencies in more than uh, 10 devastated countries. And that is, you know, name them South Sudan in under Operation Lifeline Sudan, uh, North Sudan, Darfur section, Central African Republic, Chad, Somalia, Afghanistan, Congo, Liberia, among others. And I've seen real life what anarchy means in terms of Honorable the, the level of devastation, the level the of Senator suffering, the level of human suffering, mothers, women, and children undergo for you to be able to imagine that this country can easily be allowed to go into anarchy. It is extremely important as leaders. And I want to take this opportunity at this juncture to really immensely appreciate the efforts of the House leadership, particularly the majority leader and the minority leader, for this bipartisan approach, for us to be able to do moments of sincere self-reflection self, self as leaders in this country and also as the moment that has really awoken, you know, the true humbleness in the leadership as it is. Madam Speaker, I want to you know, maybe take this opportunity as the Chair of Finance and Budget, because I've seen the memorandum that the President has sent back to National Assembly. That memorandum ought to have also come to the Senate, but nevertheless, I want to take this opportunity to advise the Cabinet Secretary for Treasury to be able to get to understand first. Government ministries, whether at the county level or national level, have the tendency to use different words to mean the same thing for purpose of generating budget lines to be allocated money. If the cabinet secretary will sit on the budget of the government of Kenya, I'm 100% sure he will be able to come through to reduce uh, the amount of deficit maybe as a result of the finance bill uh, uh, having been rejected by the president. Issues to, to do with recurrent expenditure, feel good, allocations to politically correct individuals in form of development that are absolutely unnecessary, and uh, issues to do with uh, renovation, uh, refreshment, uh, training and development, and many other issues including foreign and domestic travel. I would like to urge National Treasury to really get through, comp the numbers in order to be able to get a rational budget that is able to really uh, capture the aspiration of uh, Kenyans as well as Gen Z in terms of living within our means. Now, Madam Speaker, let me come to the realities of the government of our president, President William Samoe Ruto. Madam Speaker, I, I was in Azimio in the last uh, general election, but after election, through invitation, I managed to join Kenya Kwanzaa government. And by joining, we happen to have majority in the Senate and majority in the National Assembly. However, Madam Speaker, the President was very wise, maybe enough, to have considered those that have supported him and give them cabinet consideration. However, two years have passed. August next month, two years would have lapsed in the first term of government. It is about time for the president to be able to really look very, very deeply into whether or not political reward has really managed to help him manage the political government into delivering the results that is required. I say this because I have first-hand experience on many issues. 
I have examples of cabinet secretaries have, I am a co-principal or in Kenya Kwanzaa, but I have cabinet secretaries in this government that have tried to really look for, try to make phone calls to, not for personal issue, but issues affecting the public that have elected us into office to represent them. Phone calls are not responded to. Messages are not responded to. And when you walk to the office that is supposed to be providing services, the, the offices, the, the, the occupant of the offices are not in the office. A period of six months have passed to the level that I decided to take my frustration to the President of the Republic of Kenya and share with him trivial issues that could have been managed at the Cabinet Secretary's office, which is their mandate to do, and the political leaders have a responsibility of representation, which is a critical role uh, that they need to undertake on behalf of the people that elected them into office. And only for the President to call and share the same issues I would have shared with the respective Cabinet Secretary. And I was asked to go and see the Cabinet Secretary. Six months down the line, I am unable to see that Cabinet Secretary. Now the question I ask myself, my issues are very, very uh, minor. I can uh, overlook and forget about it. But the question is, who is managing the political government, the political government of President uh, Ruto? Who is managing? If the Cabinet Secretaries do not understand their role, that everything must be done by the President of the Republic of Kenya, Trivial issues that the president should not even speak to. Issues that our cabinet secretary needs to attend to. And instead, what we have are cabinet secretaries Honorable that Senators, are working. Senator Keroche, can you please consult in what we have? What we have are cabinet secretaries that are working as CEOs of private entities. They talk to who they want, be in the office when they want, and they make feel good appointments that are picture smart. The other issue as I observed, because this is an excellent moment of reflection, where they have dubbed our president into launching projects that the procurement process has not been even finished. Project then that in this age of information, project that the president goes, he does groundbreaking. Six months later, nothing has happened. Who are responsible for that? Cabinet secretaries. Why? Because they are looking for picture smart opportunities to, for them to be able to be seen they are working. Now we have a situation where unless the president speaks, you don't see any cabinet secretary speaking in defense of the government. Uh, you don't see them moving. Okay, you find them flying. Only for them to get opportunities that will make them, you know, a, a, a feel good opportunity for that matter. The president is faced with a huge challenge when it comes to most cabinet members. A few of them are very diligent at delivery, but most cabinet secretaries are not delivering for the president. And the president cannot run the country and also run the political government of that country. It requires cabinet members who are able to do their responsibilities with minimum supervision. Madam Speaker, at some point, I shared, I shared, you know, some unfortunate advice, maybe even to our president. He does not have to go every other Sunday to a new church because he will be bombarded with requests and those requests, he will be forced to make promises that it will be impossible to fulfill. It makes the president look bad. Maybe the same way President Moi uh, uh, Maremu President Moi, President Kibaki were able to go to churches within the CBD so that you are able to provide a lot of time for, to supervise your ministries as required. Our president also does not have to fly every other day to this small event you are invited to, to this other small event you are invited to. Uh, uh, an MP tells you there is some small event you go. You lack the time required for you to sit down and supervise your ministries in the state house and for you to be able to reflect on the performance of your ministries as required. It is extremely critical 
that our president does not respond to every little issue that is there. For example, I was very pained as a leader in Kenya Kwanza when, you know, when reporters who are also fighting for fame and space, you invite them in the middle of chaos for interview to State House. You know, these reporters themselves are fighting for space. Why do you invite them? Then you are able to give, you want to inform the country, do press briefing. That does not have required for you to, you, and then you get uh, reporters that them, themselves, that is an opportunity for them to really, uh, you know, make you look bad and fight for fame themselves. It's a very unfortunate scenario that took shape. Our president does not have to speak every time. He shouldn't speak every time to every little issue that comes up. He needs to reflect more. Use the cabinet and other structures of government to be able to speak government positions as, as required. And I want to really, you know, end in the moment of the opportunity, end by saying two issues. I would like to urge is actually see the president, Madam Speaker. I would like to urge him to get to understand it is very easy for Kenya to accomplish free secondary education in this country. We only need to restructure CDF so that you don't have parents going to the doors of members of parliament begging them for school fees and school fees being dished out as a favor school fees being dished out as a favor to these parents or if you are if you are not politically correct you don't get why should kenya of the 21st century be able to be subjecting itself to that yet there's a lot of money in the name of cdf where the members of parliament are using it as a privilege to say i can do that for you or you you didn't support me forget about it the government can provide free secondary education. Something that will be populous and will make this president look good. Something that will identify with Gen Z and they're able to understand that their plight has been looked into by the government of the day. It is not impossible. My governor has tried to provide free secondary education. It's a little bit challenging, but in Mandera it's taking shape. Why can't it be replicated in the whole nation? And all we need is to restructure CDF so that the amounts being used can be directed and free secondary, uh, 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 free secondary school be provided to our younger generations and those that are unable to pay their fees. Madam Speaker, in the interest of time, I beg to support. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Roba. Senator Mwaruma Jones Mwashusha.